Joanna Adler. I used to be the editor of the newsletter here in the neighborhood. And one of the issues that I get asked every single day without fail is about a grocery store and about parking. So the parking permit plan has been implemented. That's great. Glad to have it. Still a little disappointed about the costs because at $150 a year, knowing that Rockridge pays 50, it's painful. And if it's about having us pay and having revenue neutral program, I'd like to see that happen with the rest of the city for equality. In the past, um, our neighborhood has sort of been left out of a lot of things because we haven't been very big people wise until the last four or five years. I've been down here a lot longer than that. Um, JLDA has come into being, what, in the last four years? Um, I'd like to see our District 3 per council member, whether it's Nancy again, whether it's you, Greg, or you, Sean, I'd like to see you guys get involved in that. Be a, come to some of the meetings, come to some of the events. We have Trash Bash, we don't do it on the same day as Earth Day because we want people to be able to do both. Um, and that's been going on for nine years, seven of which, or six of which I organized and never saw anyone from anyone outside our neighborhood. And maybe that's the way it should be, but I'd just like to see more involvement from council in our area. We have a lot going on in terms of development down here, but all the money from all that development goes where? To the rest of downtown, because that's the corridor for the development funds. But some of that money? My opinion should stay in our neighborhood to add curb and gutter, add better street lighting, um, and also that better development could have been had. I mean, now what's there is there, so you got to make the most of it, and that's why I put my store where I put it. Cabaret licenses, you talked about a little bit in the beginning, and um, I think we saw what a disaster the Mingles situation was here with Zazu's around the corner. <coughs> And now we've got um, Kimball's on the other side of Broadway with a pretty big project and Silk Road. And I, I would like to see a better policy plan for cabaret licenses. And that specifically I'd like you each to address because that issue here, I would love to have a vibrant nightlife down here. But I'd like it to be safe. Um, and the hyphy crowd, I'll get in trouble for saying no hyphy, but seriously, that's the only problem that's been caused with any of the cabaret licenses in this neighborhood. And at one point we let the cabaret license from Zazu's, because of the um, doom that it would cause financially <coughs> for that business, overrule the doom that it caused many residences here in Portobello in terms of property values. Now, I'm a little confused. My business doesn't get any help from the city, and if I didn't provide a service, I'd go under. Why does the zoos get support from the city for a cabaret license? It just doesn't make sense, and I'd like these things to make more sense. Lastly, the grocery store issue. Yes, there is, in theory, a space for it in the new Amtrak parking garage. There's no guarantee we're going to get a, a grocery store because typically Jack London Square charges a really high rent, and grocery stores can't handle high rents. So I'd like to know if $300,000 can go to the Mandela Foods Co-op and still not have something open, what do we get down here and can we have $500,000 and I'll guarantee you we have a store that's a co-op or something. So those are the things that I hear about every day. I'm trapped in my little store, everyone knows where to find me, and those are the questions I get. <laughs> Thanks. In case anyone doesn't know where to find Joanne, <laughs> <laughs> Greg, would you, would you start and, and, and see if you can touch on these issues? Sure. Um, and I thank you for the, the heartfelt uh, comment, because I hear some pain in your voice about having to hear this day in and day out and not have a solution for it. I think that part of what um, you suggested to us is that there's got to be a more comprehensive approach to what happens in district. And I believe that's true for what happens in the entire city. So, for instance, the cabaret license, <coughs> and, and I'll juxtapose that against the hyphy crowd. The hyphy crowd tends to be the young adults who don't have the resources to do some other things. So they're kind of taking their party to the street, right? There's got to be some balanced approach to helping everybody in the city have a good time and do it in a safe way. When I talk to my kids about where are you going tonight, because I have 23-year-olds, 18, 16, and 14. 14 doesn't need to go anywhere. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but the older ones, they have driver's licenses, they're moving around, and I have to, as a parent, to ask, like, so where exactly are you going? And when I ask that question, I want to know, is it something structured? Is it something that's going to happen in a way that's going to be safe? We made the, the ghost riding uh, donuts problem worse by starting the cop and robber kind of thing, chasing kids around. When they first started, it was on empty parking lots, like at home base out in East Oakland. And basically, nobody was bothered by it. When that lot got closed off, then it took it into the streets. We had, when I worked with the um, community building team back in the mid-90s, it was an uh, empowerment zones, community building team, city of Oakland had 42 people, we coordinated them, and the younger people in there said, can we have a more controlled environment for driving our cars crazy, like demolition dirt? Like, how would you do it? They came up with some actually decent ideas, and most adults, older people were like, ah, that's crazy, don't do it. So guess what happened? People started doing out in the middle of, the, of intersections where people get hurt or killed or the worse. So the cabaret license piece, again, I think it needs to be put into context of what's the comprehensive plan for making it happen. A manageable size cabarets where you know that you're going to have security. It goes to the police services issue because on the police services side, they're working overtime. And those co the cops who are in our city working overtime are stressed out. So, we, so it's a balancing act between those things. The other things you talked about, um, just overall, the grocery store, you know, I'm frustrated too. I live in the 1600 block of Myrtle in West Oakland. So I'm situated sort of between the defunct store at uh, Acorn Gateway, and I get to go either to Pack and Save in Emberville, or Trader Joe's, or like some Oakland-based store. And it would be like up on 51st, or it's down, you know, or Whole Foods. And Whole Foods has become such an event like, I don't really have time. Like, yeah. I want to go to the grocery store to buy groceries, not to cruise, sorry. You know, like, I'm married, right? I guess that would happen. If you're single, you can hang out, right? But there's something about the fact that we don't have access to fresh food, fresh fruits and vegetables easily. We've got some farmer's markets that are beginning to emerge. But the point of your, the bigger point I take from your comments is that every part of District 3 is important. Yes. Every part of District 3 <laughs> deserves attention. And I think the way you get that attention is by beginning to invite people to come out to meetings like this, by, you know, and having real conversations. I'm, I'm hungry for real conversations. Not the one way, like, let me blab on for a while about something I believe in, but rather hearing from you. And so as a city council person, my approach to this is going to be actually to have a lot more community meetings in all parts of the district and having some joint meetings where people in the lower bottoms get to meet folks in the Portobello. Where people in the downtown Lake Merritt area get to talk to people in, in you know, across the way um, in Adams Point. There, there's just not enough of that going on. And I think within us, within this community, within this room, within the rooms like this, we got the solutions. We got some really bright, talented, innovative people who live in this city. And I, don't, I think we have not harnessed the power of who we are. And I think as an overall thing, this moment in history, this moment in Oakland, is sort of speaking to us to, to begin to do things in a very different way. So, but thanks for your, and I was feeling you. Nancy? Sure. Uh, let's start with the, the cabarets. Uh, the, the problems we've had are serious. Uh, they, I've been working with Barbara Killey, for our administrative hearing officer, who I, I think is, is an excellent city staff person and uh, really <coughs> feels for the communities where these problems are. And I think she's been very sensitive. Zazu's is an interesting case. I have been actively saying that Zazu's was getting special treatment for years. And they weren't, because they have friends with Don Parada and they're friends with Ignacio de la Fuente. And they they got the vote, the majority votes on the council. But you, if, you, if you check the history of, of the problems at Zazu's, I was always bringing that to the, their attention, and they were diminishing the work that I was doing. So that, that's been frustrating to me as well. I believe we really do need to have a joint process where we talk about what is the entertainment district, what should it look like, where should it be exactly, what are the boundaries, what kinds of standards do we want from a cabaret permit. I'm happy to work on that with you and I will initiate that, that process. I think that, that's uh, a, definitely a, an important pro uh, step. I had talked to the city administrator about uh, looking at that as well to try to put something out for us to work with based on some other cities that she'd seen because she she also thinks it's very important, but I haven't seen it from her, so I'll have to initiate it myself. Mm -hmm. With respect to the grocery store, West Oakland has very, very low income residents. Grocery stores like to come to places where there is a certain amount of disposable income. On rare occasions, we can get a sort of medium kind of a store. We were able to get a store at the Jack London Gateway Shopping Center, 
when we did the first time home buyers uh, section of Acorn. Uh, the fellow who had that store then wanted to move back to Los Angeles to be with his family. He sold it to a Korean market who made a bad investment and was gone overnight. Uh, we are now actively looking for another store. We, uh, I spoke just last week to both Safeway and, and Trader Joe's. I said, we really need a market in West Open. When can you come? Uh, we have a whole bunch of new people moving. We have new uh, income in West Open. When can you come? Trader Joe's said, we're not going to open another store for at least two years. Safeway, uh, and when we do, we want to do it in Jack London. Safeway said, uh, we'd like to do one in Jack London. So you guys are in, in better shape than, than my West Open community. And I uh, actually plan to have a meeting with Safeway fairly soon, and anybody from this area who would like to meet with them as well to talk about what you know possible sites, where you'd like to see it located, uh, I'd love to have you included in that meeting. So I'll, I'll call on you and we can make it a, a joint discussion. Uh, with respect to... Uh, the interaction of the, with the council office and, and, and this office and, and this uh, group and the rest of West Oakland, it's been really difficult for me as a council member to get everybody all talking to each other. For a while, we actually had uh, some folks from Jack London occasionally coming to a town hall in West Oakland. What I was doing was having a, a West Oakland town hall and a sort of down th this side of, uh, uh, of the freeway, the 880 freeway. Um, uh, not 880 freeway, but the 980 freeway kind of a town hall because people were not going across to, to talk to each other. Then I noticed that no one from Jack London was going to either of those town halls. So I started to have uh, the last Saturday of the month uh, coffee hour here, which I continue to have. Sometimes nobody shows up. Uh, sometimes a few people show up and we have a nice conversation. Occasionally we've had somebody from West Oakland come and, and the dialogue has, is fabulous. It's, it's really nice to have that. But I really need to hear from you what kinds of things will make you come to a town hall at West Open so that we can have that cross uh, uh, communication or, or to a, a downtown kind of uh, uh, discussion? Uh, because I, it doesn't naturally happen. Just like it doesn't naturally happen that people cross over uh, race uh, for, for discussion or even gender. So often people will, will hang out together by, uh, by gender. You have to work to make that change. That's, it's been uh, historically a problem. Uh, it, it takes work. I, as somebody who was in a, uh, an interracial marriage and when my husband passed away, I had to work hard to make sure there were African American people in my circle for my daughter because the natural thing is for people to, to uh, click off by race, by, by class, by all kinds of things. And, and we have to work, if we really want diversity in the city that is meaningful, that is not just uh, you know, people of, of five different races walk around the lake separately at, at the same time, but really talk to each other and walk together, that takes work. And, and I'm happy to work on that with you. I, I have been doing that in my personal life. I'd be happy to do it as a community member as well. Uh, well, with all due respect, look at this room. I mean, we have a combination of, of races and genders and orientations and people here who will make this a wonderful place to live here at the Portobello and this community in Jack London Square, a great place to live because people are, are out there in Oakland. That's why Ramon and us have relocated uh, from places all over the world to Oakland, is because we can mix in easily with each other. And I, you, you see it all the time. You see it in West Oakland where I live, where there's a group of us that go man a very dangerous corner every Friday night and stand out there. When we saw a market come up, now you're supposed to be notified when markets come up, right? Because this is part of the planning process. Yeah, well it just sprung up over in West Oakland. We weren't aware that this, this market, which is really just another liquor store by a better name, uh, came up. We decided to organize and stand on that street corner. And we're talking all races, all, all genders, all, all uh, socioeconomic levels. Uh, people that have lived there for 30 years and people that have lived there for just a few years, all standing there together. And we drove away the drug dealing that was there because we were people willing to come together. And that is in part of the spirit that I work in. Uh, you have seen me in this community because Coven House goes out there. And it's, it, the trash bash that we just did together uh, wasn't something that was new for me. It was a third Earth Day like activity that I was doing in two weeks. Why? Because I always believe it's out to be in, in, in the community. It's important to be out there. Uh, lots of people uh, worry about where is our money going with our social programs, right? Uh, they don't know because they don't see community groups. So as we've been going around to different community groups, to different neighborhood crime prevention councils, it's not the first time people are seeing Sean Sullivan because I've always brought Covenant House out into the community. 
That's what we need from a city council leadership. And what I hear Joanna's question saying, where, where is the presence at our, our JLDA meetings? And I've been there multiple times. Not when Covenant House has a crisis, but just to show up and check in with the community. Uh, I've been there in West Oakland, and I've been to uh, the Adams Points groups. Not when there's a crisis, not when there's any need for Covenant House to be there, only to say, people I know we're all concerned about are young people, here's the resources. And that is what you can expect from me as your city council member. To be active, to be out there in the community, not waiting for you to contact <coughs> me or, or hoping that you find out about uh, different events that we're having, but to have someone out there that is very proactive. To the issues that you particularly brought up, um, with cavalry licenses, it, it, this, des this area is meant to be a destination area. The waterfront is meant to be open, and we're supposed to have a nightlife district uh, as part of the estuary policy plan. And so we should have had discussions a long time ago about what that was going to look like. We see this development coming up right now. Uh, we shouldn't be talking now about what is, gonna, is it going to look like. This should have been a long time ago. And as this continues to develop, we're going to revisit the estuary uh, plan in just a few months. I believe it's uh, on the agenda for the summer. This is something we need to be actively doing right now to make sure that people in Jack London are in the discussion group. Uh, that are for what this is actually going to look like rather than saying, well, nobody showed up. We had this planning process, but nobody showed up. We need to be out there now recruiting for people to get involved in this, uh, not just coming around election season and saying, this is what we've done. And we don't need to be calling uh, you know, different vendors like Safeway and Trader Joe's during election season. This is something that when people are hungry, you need it all the time. This is not a new issue, as Greg pointed out, that for people who have been living there in, in West Oakland for a long time without a grocery store and seeing a blip come up in the, in the Eugene market and then it go away. And to the point that you had, it, to, to, to be fair, the money, the first $200,000 came from WOPAC, which is where redevelopment money goes in uh, West, West Oakland. And there you had people who were really saying, look, the economy doesn't suggest that we should have a grocery store down here that we need one. So let's make an investment of that. But that is where you deserve to have advocacy from the city council, your city council member, and your government to make sure those monies are used effectively and wisely. And I have talked to the members of, of the board for WOPAC, and, and they're as frustrated as everyone about why you still go down there and you look for indicating that it's going to be a grocery store anytime soon than this room here. It is an outrage that this has been going on for over two years and we still don't have a grocery store. It is an outrage that a 99 cent store crept in and said, okay, we're going to open here. But then we, that we had fighting coming from the city council office and uh, working with Bridge Housing to restrict their produce area to 50 feet. Advocates in community health have been trying to get people in low-income neighborhoods to eat healthy, to eat better produce, and have access to better produce for decades. So to come in and say, well, you can finally afford the produce, but now we're going to restrict the amount you can get just because we don't like the fact that you are not based here in Oakland and we don't like the fact that some money will be leaving this community, even though we can't get our act together around a community store in, right next to you, we're going to restrict the amount of access that you have. Well, I invite you, as some of you have, to drive on down to the 99 cent store where many people in our neighborhood live below the poverty line, where 99 cents makes a great deal of sense to them and how they're going to feed their families. You look at the joy on their families' faces when they have a full cart of groceries, including potatoes and tomatoes and salads that they're able to bring home for their families. And to think we fought this because we thought in some enabling way that we knew better, this is what the community needs and we need to see more of this. So how do we get it? Would I like to see that store be a union? You better believe it because I grew up in a union family. Would I like to see more for the community over there? You better believe it. But I think we'd start by taking small steps, things that we can measure, because it's the results that matter. Because we're talking about how we feed families. We're talking about how we make communities better. And that is how we get done. And it relates to the crime. It does relate to the crime and food and food access. Because if people do not have access to food, it leads to all these type of problems. It leads to the stealing. You know, there's a Chinese character that, uh, for harmony, and it's uh, made up of two symbols, one uh, which is an open mouth and one which is a, uh, a grain of corn that's ripened. And the idea behind it is that uh, when you have both an open mouth and, a, uh, and food coming together, then you can have peace in your community. And so that is the only way we're going to be able to do that in West Oakland and the only way that we're going to get real action around here uh, and to have a grocery store is to bring some real leadership around it so that we can bring those two together. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more question because we have to break this up soon. Alex? 
had a follow-up question on crime. Um, it seems like uh, it's solving the crime problem is a precursor to attracting business, but attracting business and getting the additional sales tax revenue is what's going to pay to solve the crime. So all of you talked about what you're going to do to work on crime, but none of you talked about how you're going to attract businesses or what kind of steps you're going to take to create a business-friendly environment. And so I'm curious to hear about that. I ask you to be brief, but you go first. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a plan for that. You can go uh, to find out more about the stuff that I've been talking to at SeanSullivan.org. And I've been endorsed by the East Bay Small Business Council uh, for the very things I've been talking about in terms of uh, job creation and, and uh, attraction. One of the, th the things I think is key, and, and we talk about how do we get crime, how do we do something right away, and I talked about it just a minute ago, and you've got to make small steps. One of those steps could be, uh, as I've outlined on my website, a, a three-year moratorium on taxes for restaurants that want to relocate to the Broadway Spine and to Telegraph Avenue. To use some of those vacant storefronts and turn them into restaurants so that they plug into the Fox Theater, they plug into the Paramount, so when people leave there, there's somewhere to go, or people go beforehand, but people go after work, there's somewhere to go. I mean, you look at Cafe Von Cleef, which I know has uh, had a storied history with the, the incumbent and, and other places there. there people are packed in there. People do want to stay downtown. They do want to go. Look at uh, the Trappist. Packed. It's a little small storefront. Uh, we need to uh, open wide the doors of Oakland and say Oakland is open for business. And we need to bring businesses into Oakland. And a, a tax holiday is one way to do that. Another way to do that is the creation of a small business commission. So instead of, which I hear from, from anywhere that you see a Sean Sullivan Stein in a storefront is someone who has, has spent about an hour with me talking about how Oakland makes it so onerous for businesses to open here in this community. And hearing from them, uh, why is the city constantly telling people uh, that this is how you do business in Oakland and this is what we want and so forth. I know the incumbent talks about starting a new business so that you can learn the ways of the, the, the struggles and so forth. We don't need to start our own businesses to learn it. We need to listen to those of you that are owning small businesses and learn what you need before we decide that we need a facade improvement. We need to hear that if it's coming from you. Or is there a better re way of relocating, reallocating our, our, our resources? How can we help small business? By listening to you, by bringing you into City Hall rather than putting all these regulations on you, by having you have a commission right there that listens and advocates on your behalf in creation of policy rather than creating onerous regulations around what you can't do in the city. Uh, th what we've been told about what you can't do is, is dominated the conversation for so long and that when we get young people out of the streets, this is one way we can do with the, the restaurant plan I was talking about and by creating small businesses because like Joanna, small businesses are more likely to take a risk on kids and hire them for their first job, take them with a storied background and give them an opportunity to, for work. They're willing to do that more so than other companies which have strict regulations about how they hire. And that's how you immediately start to bring some of the crime down. I've seen it for the last decade, putting kids to work. You take kids who are, yeah, making a lot of money on the street corner, they want some uh, solvency in their life. They want to get off the street corner. Give them a job. Even if it pays them just $10 an hour, they'll take it if they know it's a job that they can go home and feel proud about every day. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I was going to ask Nancy to go next. Okay. Uh, there are two areas of, of uh, business attraction that I'm focusing on. One, uh, first was to uh, get some certainty in the industrial land so that we could actually attract in industry. Uh, and the reason we had to get the zoning uh, settled for that is that when you can have housing in land that's also uh, for industry, the price of land per square foot for housing is so high that business just doesn't, uh, can't afford to start there. Uh, so it's very important to have a city that's balanced, that has uh, some industry, some retail, some housing, some mixed use, but, but not to get rid of industry altogether. So it took quite a while. It was, it was contentious uh, to, to get in industrial zoning. Uh, now to follow up on that, where we have the incredible, uh, incredibly competitive uh, uh, Mandela Corridor that's competitive with, with uh, suburban uh, business parks, Oh, we can really start an, an, an active uh, initiative to attract uh, industry there. And I'm starting uh, town halls on that subject. In April, we had one on biotech. Uh, we invited businesses and some training programs so that young people who went to that uh, could see not only that this might come to their neighborhood, but how they could plug into it, what kinds of training they could get so that they could be an employee in, in that kind of uh, uh, business. The next 
Uh, one is going to be in uh, mid-June on green tech. Um, we'll have one on creative arts after that. So that, that's the industrial aggressive strategy. We have a new um, uh, pamphlet that shows uh, uh, it, it, it uh, addresses people to a website that has all the West Oakland businesses listed, which we've never had before. Uh, we have a new newsletter on industrial development as well to attract more people to the land. Uh, on the retail side, we have uh, set aside an area uh, where a lot of the auto dealers are leaving uh, on Auto Row, some of them going to uh, the Army base where they feel they'll have better exposure to the, to the freeway. Uh, others have, have just uh, retired because they've gotten older, they don't want to do it anymore. Uh, we want to save those spaces for other retail. We don't have too many other large spaces for, for a, a major retail. Uh, Target wants to locate here, Costco wants to locate here, so we're, we're, we're trying to figure out where's the best place for those. Uh, the, the Broadway Spine seems like a, a viable location. We've uh, set up uh, the zoning so that it would work, and now we're doing a specific plan, as Walnut well Creek did, to uh, attract retail there. And now that we have more uh, people with disposable <coughs> income in the uptown area, we should be able to attract retail there, too. Uh, we also have done a, uh, a real uh, concerted effort to partner with businesses in the downtown area and start business improvement districts so that uh, the city owns some of the property, the businesses own uh, some of the property. Uh, we all pool in a little extra money and we'll be able to hire uh, additional security as well as do uh, uh, beautification of the street and that's been the, the highest priority for those areas. We, we just finalized one in uh, uh, Koreatown Northgate last year or uh, might, might even be a little bit over <coughs> a year now and two, of the, uh, two more for the uptown and downtown areas just came to uh, committee last week and we supported them and, and we'll be finalizing that in the council meeting. So we'll have additional resources there uh, for the security to, to help businesses grow and then the other businesses uh, attraction efforts to attract more jobs. Thank you. Great. Great. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, and it's interesting to me to hear what we're all saying about this, but the question I have back to you is do you hear any coherence in any of this? Because it sounds like to me this is the way that Oakland typically has been led over the last uh, de couple of decades. Lots of little ideas that sort of pop up like popcorn, but no coherence, no comprehensiveness. The first thing I hear that, that comes out of this for me is infrastructure. We've got to make sure that small businesses feel like their needs for facade improvements, for that uh, police officers work walking that beat, but the infrastructure that makes it attractive for them to both stay here and come, come here and then stay. The second piece has to do with some short-term victories around the policing piece, the safety piece. Because if you've got some element where you say there's some low-hanging fruit, there's some things we can do by talking to business owners, by talking to Joanne, by talking to people who run businesses, and say, tell me what it is that you need, but put it in the context of a broader safety plan. The third piece for me is then you incubate new businesses. You incubate green business. You have to have a focus. And what I've noticed about city government here is that we don't have a focus most of the time. Whether you like Jerry Brown or not, Jerry talked about 10K, and he drove it into your brain. You knew what his agenda was. You didn't necessarily agree with it always, but you knew what it was. Right now, you can't say what it is. You can't say what is the overall plan for development for District 3. You can't, you can't say what it is, because it hasn't been articulated. So I think part of this has to do with getting clear, getting a public consensus about what it is that you want what it is that we think we can do to lift those ideas up and then lead it consistently, courageously, doing it in a way that's smart. And then bring innovation to it. The last thing I'll say about it, and it was interesting to see in your newsletter that you referenced the tram in Portland. I do a lot of work in Portland. And one of the things in the Pearl District in Portland, which is very reminiscent of this area, is it used to be warehouses. Now it's a really vibrant area. You've got retail, shoe stores, boutiques, that sort of thing. I think it's the first Thursday of every month. They basically get all of their arts community folks to come out. And if you're a visual artist painting on canvas, you get to put your work up in a shoe store for the evening. If you're a uh, arts vendor, if you're a shoe salesman, you get to put your, your goods in somebody else's store. But the point is you get to move around with your business. It's created the most, one of the most vibrant pedestrian uh, activities in any city that I've ever been in. People are excited, people are walking around, there's wine tasting, there's cheese. You get the, the, the vendors who are selling shoes get the benefit of the arts person who comes in to see a piece of art and they say, oh, I like those shoes too. I mean, it is, it's a really interesting approach to take in what was a warehouse district and turn it into a really vibrant area. But it's because somebody in Portland said, we're going to focus on this day in, day out, and make it happen. 
not have a little bit of this over here and a little bit of this over there. And I think that, unfortunately, is a problem. Leadership's primary job, to me, is to change the culture of whatever the institution is, to change the way you think about business, to remove the barriers to doing business in Oakland. People that I talked to who tried to use the one-stop capital shop back in the days when that was the idea found it very difficult. A lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy. You can never quite get your project through. And I think that's part of the culture of the city. Has it gotten a little bit better? Maybe a little bit better. But are we satisfied with it? So the question I pose is, like, are, can you articulate what the vision is for your district right now? If not, why? And if you do have a vision, is anybody listening to that vision? Is anybody paying attention to it enough to say, you got a really good idea? And here's how the idea fits into this larger, broader piece of work that we're going to do. And then once we decide and get some consensus about it, we're going to relentlessly pursue it and not be turned back by you know, bumps in the road and maybe one day we'll get to it and it might take another 20 years. If you want to have, if you want to take another 20 years, I've been saying this everywhere I go, then you should, everybody in the city should re-elect the incumbents. You really should. You should if you like the pace of progress, Re-elect the people who are leading now. But if you don't feel satisfied, take a look at the choices that you have. And you've got some choices in front of you. Thank you. We've got to close up now. I'm going to ask each of you to give us two-minute closing. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Uh, I know that Nancy has to go to another event. I don't know if the other two candidates can hang out for a while to chat. But I also invite you to talk among yourselves, talk about what we've heard tonight and what it means to you as a citizen of Oakland and as a citizen of the area. I think we've heard a lot of really very strict. Two minutes each. Sean, would you go first? Sure. Thank you. Well, once again, my name is Sean Sullivan. I thank you all for coming and, and spending time with us tonight. I've got all night. So you want to stay and ask questions. I'm not running off to anything else. Uh, listening to voters has been uh, what's compelled me to run and what will keep me fresh as your council member for the next four years if you do the honor of electing me, uh, whether through absentee right now or on uh, June 3rd. Uh, I want to be your city council member because I think that results matter. And I think that you need to see results in a very clear way uh, as well as long-term goals. And that's why I've outlined on my website some of what I've talked about here this evening. You need to see progress right away with our, with our crime. You need to see progress with young people getting off the streets right away, which is why I talked about the, and came up with the restaurant attraction plan. So we can get young people off the street right away. And then we need to see, as I've also detailed, a green enterprise zone for the Army base and uh, more green jobs as, as Covenant House has partnered with uh, the Ella Baker Center and others. I, we've all partnered with the Ella Baker Center here uh, because we're all proud of that program and, and the leadership they provide for this community. Uh, results matter because, look, we're a city that has accepted excuses for far too long. Accept excuses for the way things are, for the way that crime has control, for the way that uh, we allow criminals to re-entry back in this community and only to terrorize again w without the, the safe uh, blocks in place to keep us all safe. Result, uh, results really are important. Uh, we can't, the excuses that we've heard in regards to zoning, look, if we want to create jobs here in Oakland, we can do it. The, the, the talk about retail uh, for a Target or a Costco coming to Broadway needs to be had in, the, in, in reality. Costco is looking for 27 acres. When they talk about spots that they want to come to, they're talking about mass acreage, which we don't have on the Broadway spine. We may not even have on the average lot size, which is about 25,000 square feet over in West Oakland. We don't have it there either. There's about one or two sites that they could maybe reconfigure down for. We'd have to provide a lot of incentives to do that unless they do it over at the Army base. So, <laughs> so I'm well over my time, but I want to thank you again for your time, and I want you to think about results uh, when you go to, to vote. Do they matter to you? And if they do, I ask humbly for that vote. Oh. Thank you. Nancy? Sure. Yeah, I, maybe it's because I've been in, in the district for 27 years. I, I see an enormous amount of change from when I first came to, to, uh, to Oakland. Uh, it, it's like night and day, certainly, in, in my neighborhood. And I'm not saying at all that it's a finished uh, work. It, it's definitely a work in progress. Our work should always be a work in progress and, and will continue to be uh, because there are always new people coming, new ideas, and, that, and that's what we have to uh, incorporate so that everybody feels like it's their city. If you look around District 3, you will see a lot of things happening, a lot of change, a lot of progress. 
Fast progress, what is fast progress? Is fast progress something that's going to push out the very, very low income people in our community, of which we have 85% of our households in District 3 living on $50,000 or less? If you do things fast, it tends to hurt the poorest people first. So we have to be careful about things happening too fast. And at the same time, we want things to happen fast enough so that we experience good things in our lifetime. So it's a real art to do public policy that meets the needs of everybody in the community, that lifts up all boats. And that's certainly my highest priority. For years, I have been talking about sustainable development, the three E's of sustainable development. That's the culture change that I wanted to inculcate into our city. I brought it to the port. That language is now part of the port's dialogue. It's part of the city's dialogue. Is it inculcated entirely? Does everything that we do have those principles? No. So there's still work to be done. But there has been a, co a coherent vision on sustainable development. There's been a coherent vision on anti-violence, bringing the kind of, uh, doing the kind of research that, that uh, helped me find restorative justice as the right kind of pro program for coal. Took a great deal of work. Being the lone leader on, on uh, uh, industrial development, when we have incredible leaders in Los Angeles, the, the new uh, uh, head of planning in Los Angeles just gave an, uh, a marvelous presentation in Oakland, and she doesn't put up with any of the crap that we've had to put up with here in terms of spe land speculation, uh, the people who are supporting Mr. Sullivan. Um, I'm from LA, so I would we have a new you about we have that. a new planning director because I did planning there. Um, I'm trying to finish up my my uh, minute. Uh, we also had an incredible <laughs> planning uh, person from San Jose talking about how they they don't even call it industrial land anymore. They call it employment lands because people have industrial land in their mind as as uh, belching uh, uh, pollution, and that's not at all what we want. We want to have the kind of, of industry that will be uh, compatible to live next to, and that's what I've been, been working on. Uh, the kind, and when you have a port city, you have to have a space between where people live and where that industry is, because it's not pleasant to live next to. A lot of the port-related business, and, and I don't see the port going away, uh, the, a lot of the port-related business has to have uh, trucking, has to have other things that are, are just not pleasant to live next to. You have to have that buffer between where people live and where that business is. So those are the kinds of things I have been working on, will continue to work on, how to integrate economic development and public safety as high, high priorities, and making sure that we do that, uh, thinking about the future generation, thinking about a green economy, uh, and making uh, District 3 fit into the rest of the city in a, in a really beautiful and compatible way. Thank you. Great. Great. Uh, again, thank you all for uh, coming out tonight uh, to spend a little bit of time with us. Uh, I want to thank both Sean and Nancy for being here as well. Um, the more we do this, the sharper we get, the clearer we get, the distinctions between our students, the distinction our candidates on must change. And you're smart enough and wise enough to know that the change can either be glacial, sort of like what we've been seeing, or it can be meteoric, which is too fast, but we want something right in the middle. We want something that's moving things in a way that we can perceive the change, that is thoughtful, and that is informed. So for me, and I wish Nancy was here, I, but she's heard me say this before, you've had 12 years. If you didn't get it done in 12 years, what makes me believe you're going to get it done in four more? I have campaign materials from two elections ago. And that same line about we need to finish the business is in that material too. So for me, this whole notion of are we progressives? And I really wish you were here to this because at the beginning of this, I had to sue the city clerk and the registrar of voters to get on the ballot because the incumbent had a lawyer and her chief supporter interrupt the process inside City Hall. Mm -hmm. And there was never a word about it from the progressives. Nobody said anything. I grew up in a segregated South. I take voting and participation in democracy seriously. It was trying to deny people in my neighborhood from nominating me. I had plenty of signatures. They insert themselves in that process. I don't think what I'm seeing out of OPAC right now is very progressive. The two hit pieces I've seen on Nancy. Because what I've been saying all along is that no matter who wins this election, we still are going to live here. We still should be working on these same issues. I respect what Sean does at Covenant House, because I've been doing similar work for the last 15 years with Freedom Schools, with uh, Village Centers, with efforts very much like that to work with young people. So I respect that work. I respect everything Nancy's done, but it's time for a change. 
It's time for something significantly different. So the choices you have, in my opinion, are you got Nancy and Dale, who's got 12 years of experience, and will tell you we're going to get it done. Listen to the verbs. Is it present tense or future tense? With Sean, with all due respect, it would be like on-the-job training. I don't think he's got the level of experience yet, but he's a smart guy. He can figure it out. And I'm somewhere in the middle, interestingly, sitting in the middle of these two folks today. They have years of experience in both the bureaucracies. I've been a nonprofit leader for, for the last 15 years. I'm a business owner because I'm self employed. I have children. I have friends. I'm a musician. So all of those things matter. The last couple of things What's, what is our vision for a vibrant and prosperous city? A vibrant and prosperous District 3. The leading would be to listen to you, to lift up your best thinking, and then lead with courage. And I hope that if nothing else happens, on June 3rd, you call your friends, your family, your colleagues at work and get people out to vote. The elections in Oakland this year are as important as the national elections. Because whether you're a Barack Obama supporter, which I am, or a Hillary Clinton supporter, which some of you are, maybe there's a few McCain folks in the room too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and some libertarians, I don't know, I won't assume. The point is, there's gonna be significant change. And that change at the national level can't quite happen, won't get traction unless that change happens locally, here in Oakland, inside this community. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here tonight, and God bless you. That's a lot. I'm going to the <laughs> for the uh, Safe Street uh, Initiative, so if you're interested in signing it, uh, please see me afterwards. Uh, what did you think of the uh, debate? Um, it was really helpful to have them in our neighborhood and come out. And uh, it's a shame we didn't have more people, but I think uh, from a personal perspective, it pretty much told me what I thought that we need some change. Uh, after 12 years, we don't really have much, of, uh, you know, much to show for 12 years. You know, and we've got lots of little things that you can list off. Uh, if you're the incumbent, but the big picture, we don't see where it's going. Uh, so. I thought that the people asked some very good questions. Uh, I was really pleased with uh, the uh, diversity of the, of the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I live right here in uh, Jack London Square uh, at the Sierra Building, and what I've enjoyed about being in this neighborhood is that you have really a lot of concern. Uh, people, bright people, mm -hmm. they're willing to back up their rhetoric and to get involved with the community, and I think that uh, District Three needs to better reflect that uh, diversity, intelligence, concern, and activism. And uh, District Three, in many ways, uh, could be uh, uh, the economic engine of Oakland. And in fact, it is when you consider District Three. And then with Jacqueline and Square, hey, you know we're, we're we're it. So I want I want the best representation. Uh, who are you going to vote? I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote for Sean. I'm going to vote for him. All right.